Hi, my name is Alessandro Zocchi and in this video we are going to talk about the two most effective study strategies. These are at the base of a successful learning that any student should seriously consider. Actually, these strategies must be considered by anyone who is learning something new for any reason. For example, it could be at school, at university, of course, but also for any profession, in preparation of job interviews, whenever we have to teach something, or in preparation of any kind of a meeting or a job presentation, and so on. So the strategies are testing and practice distributed over time. What do we mean by testing? Well, testing is creating and practicing any type of self-testing where we ask ourselves questions whose answers are the concepts we need to learn. For example, let's say we need to study a chapter in an astronomy book or any other subject for that matters. Once we read the chapter, probably we understood all the concepts and information. Many students believe that understanding is already learning. Unfortunately, not so. Understanding is just the first step. Memorizing and recalling the information is the following most important step. How can we be sure that we remember and are able to recall and show what we studied? With self-testing. For every piece of important information we find in the chapter, we write a question whose answer is that piece of information. Keeping the astronomy example, we might read that the universe is about 14 billion years old. So what could the teacher ask during an exam? Exactly, how old is the universe? And aren't you curious to know how did the scientists do to know how old is the universe? That's another good question to write down. Questions can be at very different levels of complexity, depending on the subject and the goals of our learning. The important point to remember here is that self-testing must be considered as part of our study method, not just a test to evaluate ourselves with a mark. Such approaches are so important that many practical techniques have been developed over time. Probably the most used and effective one is the flashcard technique. This technique will help us to organize and practice efficiently with the questions. Originally, it just used the small pieces of paper, the flashcard precisely. On one side, we write the question and on the opposite side, the answer. When we have completed a study session, we'll have a stack of flashcards and we can start testing ourselves. We read the question on the first card and we try to answer at our best. If we answer correctly, checking the other side of the flashcard, we'll put that card on a new stack. If we can't answer well a question, we'll read the answer, maybe double check the textbook for more context and put the card at the bottom of the first stack to repeat the same question later. In this way, we'll review and test us more frequently with the material we struggle more. We can use a pen and paper if we like, of course, but I suggest to experiment with one of the many digital applications available online. They are very well made and help us to monitor our learning progress. This self-testing must be repeated over time until we can answer all the flashcards and we also have to remember that we forget easily. Testing us frequently is an excellent way to keep fresh our memories. And this point brings us directly to the second most effective study strategy. Experts say that studying in short sessions with any type of method, but frequently, is a very good approach to understanding, memorizing and even becoming experts in one subject. This strategy is called practice distributed over time. Whenever we need to study something new, it's not a good idea to cram all the material in one or a few sessions, maybe just a few days before an exam. What we need to do is to plan well in advance our study sessions in order to distribute them over a longer period of time. We need to remember that our brain doesn't allow us to stay focused on one task more than 20-30 minutes. We need to maximize this brain rule studying, for example, half an hour every day for two weeks instead of seven hours in a row in one single day. 
Distributing our short-lasting study sessions over time will help our brain to build and potentiate those new neural links connected with the new knowledge. The brain needs time, repeated practice, breaks and sleep to activate all those neurological processes that will give us long-lasting memories. And if we often integrate self-testing in our distributed practice, we can be sure we'll fully use our brain functions. Well, that's it for this last video on study strategies. I hope it's been interesting and above all useful for your future learning life.